Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I've been asked to start with a pun, and I do not start with puns. <laughs> uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I can't really follow that speech with that sort of vigour, but I'll give you some uh, honest truth and some golden moments of how we can change other people's lives. Uh, my life started in a similar high-rise council block to Brentford Tower. Me and my siblings were a single mother. South London Institution is where we started. Two young males just full of energy and we was always on the move. At age 11, I went to an all-boys school and got enrolled in the wrong crowd. I was also statemented for dyslexia at the same time. Mainstream school system was a struggle for me. Uh, massive classes, I couldn't concentrate. It wasn't really good for me to get the sort of understanding from the teacher that I needed. And within two years, it started having antisocial behavior at school, deviance, and then two years later, by 13, I was locked up for five years for a custodial sentence. Sorry, couldn't find out. I shouldn't have drank the wine before. <laughs> During my time at HMV Huntercoon, as it was at the time, the Young Offenders Institution, I managed to receive 11 GCSEs and AS levels after 21 months of education. It was something that I took extremely well. Smaller classes, therapeutic practices at least once a day. That particular while why it taught me discipline, routine, a sense of value, and the education that I received then would open the doors for me right now. I was released at age 17. Unfortunately, I was let back out with no fixed abode. Uh, I was let back out into the same environment, to the same friends, and to the same estate where I came from. Inevitably, some people would say I was a product of my environment and I was going to go back to prison. Unfortunately, I did more than one time. At the time, my last ever sentence was 2011, I was 21 years old, and unfortunately, one of my friends was stabbed and murdered in the London streets, something we hear about today, but obviously affected me very powerfully at the time. I was at a crossroads in my life, so I was asked by a woman called Meg Buckner, who was managing a charity called Action West London at the time, if I would like to go and do a speech surrounded by criminal justice system and the need for real reforms within the rehabilitation system. It went down a storm. Uh, in the room we had MPs, peers, civil servants, something like today, uh, you guys right in front of me. And I was approached by a lord called Lord Tom McNally. Lovely man. He said, no, you can be anything. Anything you want to be, but I believe you should become a political advisor within crime and justice. You are already an expert. You have real life experiences which are unparalleled. He provided me with a real life training opportunity. His mentorship up until this day now is priceless. He's a great friend of mine, a fellow board member, and most of all, most of all, an outstanding mentor. Now I'm in my second year of uni, which he pushed for me to go to, studying applied social sciences, politics, and governmental studies. Fast forward to today and the great CSJ. I was advised by both Lord McNally and Lord Michael Hastings that I should apply to work within the CSJ as it's held in very as it's held in high regard, and I would be a perfect fit for the political route that I want to pursue. So I met with the director Rory. Yeah. <laughs> I met with the director Rory himself. He has frontline experiences of exactly the same field I did. He was a cop and I was a robber. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> thank you, thank you very much. Young people, gangs and crime. What I mean by that is, he was a cop and I was a robber. Ten minutes into the conversation, we were exactly on the same page, virtually right on our own page, relating to each other's lives. I told him about my background, but he was more interested in my future, which was a beautiful thing. A very beautiful thing to understand and hear that somebody saw my potential and promise and my desire to become a political advisor within criminal justice. I assured him that I shall become a key part of the team to help, re to help revolutionize rehabilitation and other aspects of the system. All I needed was the environment and the reach to effect change. <coughs> he said he would support me in this. He was a forward-thinking, passionate man, as well as extremely good at what he does. As a trait I got from all staff at the CSJ, and my, it's infectious. <laughs> so here I am, following my dreams and aspirations. I can only thank the CSJ for what's happened already, and to Rory for he truly believes in what the CSJ represents and what we can do together. I mean, the greatest think tank in our country, maybe just the greatest think tank in the world for social justice. Amen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. Okay. I'm and there's so much more to come from us together as a team. I just want to start making things happen of substance. Ladies and gentlemen, I wish you good evening and safe journey home.